I mean, everything I do really is aimed at getting good at every type of bouldering. I want to be able to do everything. Personally, if I'm climbing well, that's when I enjoy it the most. So. Train a bit, get a bit better, enjoy it more. The really good thing with training is it's so time efficient. So to get a lot out of your climbing, you've just got to put the hours in. You've got to spend time at the crag, spend time at the climbing wall, do loads of that. But to get a good training session in, you only need an hour, half an hour. You can sort of fit that in anywhere. And that's why I think learning how to train well is quite useful because you can always squeeze a little bit of a session in and that'll really benefit your climbing. Whereas you can't always spend a day at the crag doing mileage because how often do you have a whole day free or a dry day free <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people do look at training for climbing as a preserve of the the best people and that's why they're good but i think anyone can train and it can benefit anybody's climbing and i think if you're less injury prone because you've done some training then that's a benefit or if you're a bit stronger because you've done some training that's a benefit this is, i think it's it's good for anyone it's not you don't only train if you're really good already. You know, it can help anyone to improve a little bit. And personally, if I'm climbing well, that's when I enjoy it the most. So train a bit, get a bit better, enjoy it more. Go on. Come on. When I started, it was in, I mean, that was 97 when I first went climbing, so it was really hard to find anything about training out. At the time, you had a few magazine articles, and now it's flipped and it's sort of the other way, whereas there's just too much. If you Google how to train for climbing, there's just too much stuff. I felt like there wasn't really a book out there that covered training in a kind of useful way for a lot of people. I think a lot of the training information that was in the world was... Uh, it's quite sort of detailed and quite specific and for the kind of more geeky mind. Whereas I wanted a training book that was approachable for a kind of normal everyday climber. And they could read it, pick out some useful stuff and get to work and make the most of it rather than having to sort of read through pages and pages of numbers and stats and all that boring stuff. But the thing is, if people are into that, they'll be into that and they'll, they'll be training anyway. But I wanted to make training approachable for normal people. Some of these bits are wonderful from all over the world. Someone bought me this from Colorado, a bit of walnut. Uh, this is from my parents' garden, it's plum. That's in the park. What's this? That's in Graves Park. I think this is from Crestbrook. You. Well, that looks far too positive to be from Crestbrook. <laughs> Not sharp enough. And yeah, this is the old book of problems that we got. Also, it's vaguely in uh, difficulty order. Yeah. You got any know. like long-standing ones that you've never done? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got one that Aiden did the first ascent of. And I'm, I don't think I'd ever do it. So you just pull on with these two and go to that hold, then you're done. Well, you, you, then you go to the top, but you know. All right, let's do that. Let's do 99 problems, but a pinch ain't one. Okay. 
know. Mm. You've got to do the other side or it doesn't count. I've always liked training for, for a couple of reasons. I mean, I like feeling like I'm climbing well, so it helps with that. But also, I just enjoy the process of working through something, ticking the box it is. Sort of slightly meditative thing to do, really. I quite like doing it just on its own, for, for its own thing. Every session for me, I'll have a, I will have a goal of something I want to achieve, but generally the main, the, can, the whole reason for me doing it is because I want my overall climbing ability to improve. But I'll have, I'll have small specific goals along the way, but really, I mean, everything I do really is aimed at getting good at every type of bouldering. I want to be able to do everything, apart from dinos. <laughs> I want to be able to do every type of boulder problem, really. Correctly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, top top tip from the book. I'm pretty I'm pretty bad at like crag tactics and like yeah, it's mainly just like tactics. having cold skin when you pull up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the one. Fans. <laughs> yeah? Fans. Probably resting more than you think as well. Wait till it's a cold day before you go. Patience. Out. No, don't go out unless it's good. That's something I definitely don't do. I'm just too keen and just like, <laughs> you know, <the> absolute trust. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've been climbing for 20 odd years, so I feel like um, I've got loads of a sort of climbing skill sort of fairly well ingrained now. Whereas for me, the, the thing I'm always going to be worst at is real basic strength climbing. So for me, I spend most of my time training on real basic stuff, trying to get all these, try and get some more basic finger strength and pulling strength. Because I feel like for me, that is quite easy to transfer into a rock climbing situation. But I know there are a lot of people where they're very strong, but they struggle to translate that back onto the rock or, or into a comp or whatever they're doing.
Go on. From climbing with different people over the years, you kind of, you, you just get an appreciation of what people's sort of natural ability is and the, the areas they're good at and the areas they're bad at. And it just seemed like relative to the people I climbed with, my, my basic strength was just never quite as good as theirs for some reason. So immediately it just seemed like that's the one thing I should really put the time into working on. And I mean, it's, it's improved a lot, a lot, but it's still kind of, I think relative to the grade I climb at, it's pretty low. But I've just managed to sort of fiddle around with everything else, learn to use heels, get flexible, get good lock-off strength and all that sort of stuff. And it sort of helps lift your weaker areas a little bit. It's really important to understand that you have to make the most of, um, of your opportunity at the crag. Most people can't go out climbing every day. So if you've got a two hour window, you need to really make the most of that. So the tactics are really important. You want to turn up, warmed up with the right shoes, with the right chalk, everything sorted. You, you don't want to turn up and mess around trying to figure out what you're doing and then have to go home again. You won't get anything done. You can have so many kind of weapons in your arsenal when it comes to trying to climb a rock. You know, it's not just all climbing or all training or all tactics, but it is a big combination of getting everything just right. When you're writing a book about training, I think it's very important to try and keep it all in perspective. And the training side of climbing is it's only one part of it. It's not, you can put all your energy into training and you won't necessarily improve at climbing because there's so much to work on. There's all the tactics, all the technical side, everything that you need to work on. And for most people, if they go climbing more, they'll probably get better. Whereas training is just a small part that you could sort of bolt onto that that should help you along, but it's definitely not the way to improve. Which is silly because I've written a book about that tiny thing. <laughs>